Okay, let's look at a man in the middle attack on SSL. Okay, I love these man in the middle attacks, right? Uh, okay, so uh, Alice says, hey, can we talk? You know, here's my non sar today. Okay, uh, and Alice, uh, Trudy who's in the middle is just gonna complete the transaction with Alice and then, and then deal with Bob. So she sends her certificate and her nonce back to Alice. Alice uh, chooses a pre-master secret, right? Encrypts that with Trudy's public key and then computes this hash thing and encrypts it with the key and sends that back. Uh, Trudy then gets that pre-master secret thing. She can compute K, she sends that back. Now Alice thinks she's talking to Bob and uh, they start encrypting. And meanwhile, on the other side here, Trudy tries to complete the transaction with Bob, you know, playing the client role. Bob sends his certificate, Trudy does what she's supposed to do, sends that stuff back, uh, and so on. Okay, this better not work. Where does this break down? I was, what? The certificate. This certificate? Oh, this certificate, okay. This is whose certificate? Trudy's certificate. Why does she send her own certificate? Why doesn't she send Bob's certificate? Well, if she sends Bob's certificate, this is going to be encrypted with Bob's public key, and she can't decrypt it, and she can't convince Alice that she's, uh, you know, that she's Bob. Okay, she can't do that. So she sends her certificate. Okay, and Alice checks the signature on the certificate, and it says, "Hey, this is Trudy's certificate," and she rejects it. Or maybe it says it's Bob's certificate, but it's not signed by a valid certificate authority, right? And then she rejects it too. Okay, so it all stops right here. Doesn't get beyond that point. Just ends. Okay. Unless Trudy is very sorry. In theory. Okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> I thought about that. Uh, yeah. In the protocol, why, why not just have Alice retrieve the certificate from the CA? Why does it need to be transferred? Have Alice what? Go to the CA and retrieve Bob's certificate. Why does it have to be transferred? Well, okay. I mean, think, think about if you're doing this on the internet, right? There's billions of users, right, doing millions of transactions every day, that would be a lot of work for the certificate authority, right, to be, you know, and that would be a bottleneck, right, you potential. Can't, you can't just query them for a single certificate? Like, which which certificate authority are you going to ask? Yeah, I mean, there would be different certificate authorities possibly, but I mean, that's a potential bottleneck, right? I mean, everybody's going to, you know, uh, to VeriSign to get these things, millions, of, you know, millions per day, that could be a, a problem. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you'd have the same. You still have to verify the signature on the certificate, right? Uh, because who, you know, anybody can send you a certificate. It's public information. Right. No, you right? still need to verify. But just yeah. To the initial retrieval. So. The, but but you still have. Verify still be a bottleneck because everybody needs to verify that, right? So that's the same problem. No. Same on the phone. Uh, it wouldn't, yeah, I don't see that it would really solve any problem. It just creates a potential bottleneck. You still have to distribute the public key and you still have to verify the signature on the certificate, right? So I don't know what you gain by doing that, but, you know, that's a possible way well, you to don't, handle it. You don't have this, uh, truly you can send box to the or just an extra message. Well, you still have to go to VeriSign, right, and okay, get the certificate. Have, so VeriSign. why couldn't you do a man in the middle attack there and send the bogus certificate, right? So. Okay, so anyway, um, so it should, it should stop right here. Okay, it should stop right there. Okay, and the protocol is fine. That's the way the protocol is designed, right? It stops right there. Okay, but think about it. You're Alice here. You don't actually take that certificate and physically verify it yourself, right? What do you do? Who does this for you? You click accept. <laughs> You're doing a web transaction, right? Your web browser verifies the certificate for you. Now, your browser's trying to verify the certificate, and it can't. What does it do? Does it just end the transaction right there? It pops up a window, right? And this window says, hey, you know, i got some problem with the certificate. You know, what do you want to do? You want to continue or you want to stop? And what do you say? You say continue, and you say, hey, can I disable this annoying window so it never pops up again? You know? Once you do that, okay, once you click continue, you've opened the door to this attack. Now, I'm not saying every time you click continue, because it happens all the time, that somebody's doing the man in the middle attack, but you've opened up the possibility, right? You've opened this gaping hole uh, in the protocol. And there are tools out there, right, that will allow, help you to do this, okay? Some very sophisticated tools that will, you know, help you to do the man in the middle attack. Okay. 
So okay, so again, the thing that prevents this uh, is the uh, signature on the certificate. But if the signature check fails, that's not the end of the story. The browser allows the user to screw things up. Okay, and the user, of course, does. That's what users are for, right? Okay. Okay, got that. So again, it's not a flaw with the protocol. The protocol is working like it's supposed to. It's a flaw with the user. <laughs> the user doesn't understand what's going on. And in fact, you know, it happens so often that your browser complains about these things that people just get used to clicking continue, right? I mean, here at school, I probably shouldn't tell you this, don't get any ideas, no man in the middle attack. But here at school, you know, we have uh, some authentication whenever we're doing something on our secure web server, right? Um, and um, he said sarcastically, uh, we, on our secure web server, uh, sort of our, you know, secret stuff we, where we talk about you guys all the time. Um, no, it's so boring. You wouldn't believe the stuff that's on there. But um, anyway, so, you know, we use uh, some security protocols, and what they do is they just make up their own certificate. Why do they just make up their own certificate instead of going to VeriSign and getting a valid certificate? So much money. money. It costs a couple hundred dollars, right? Who wants to spend that money? So everybody makes up their own bogus self-signed certificate, then you have to get this message because that's the only way you can continue, right? Now, that stuff we talked about, that's called an SSL session, okay? That's what you do initially when you fire up the SSL, okay? Now, um, HTTP, there's a couple versions of it that are in common use. I don't know how much they still use HTTP 1.0, but um, when SSL was first invented, that was the thing, HTTP 1.0. Now, um, to speed up your uh, web browsing uh, sessions, uh, HTTP 1.0 has a neat little trick. What it does is it opens up a bunch of parallel connections. And why would you do that? You know, you're trying to get this web page, you're trying to download all the bits and pieces for this web page. What it does is it opens up a bunch of different connections and sort of downloads them simultaneously. Why would you do that? Just to make it more complicated? Make it faster? Make it faster. Why would that be any faster? You still only got so much bandwidth there, right? How could it be faster just because you've got a bunch of different connections going on? These are all, yeah. You can download more than one thing at a time. Uh, you could, but you still got sort of a limit, right, as to how many bits you can get. Okay. You don't control everyone else's limit to send to you, right? So. Okay. And? So, <laughs> so if, like, one connection isn't going to use all the bits that you can take, you should ask, go ask mom and dad and then your cousin and your <laughs> uncle until somebody sends you one. Uh, it's certainly, okay, it's some, something um, along those lines. Okay, you're using TCP, right? What does TCP do? It tries to get everybody their fair share, right? Okay, so if you have more than one TCP, TCP connection, each of those connections is getting their own fair share. So you're getting a lot more than your fair share by opening multiple connections. And that's really what it comes down to, right? It has this congestion control built into TCP. So the more connections you have, the more you can download, okay, if when the network's congested. Uh, and as well as all the parallel stuff probably does speed it up a little bit there. Okay, but anyway, for whatever reason, it opens up these parallel connections. Now, uh, think about it. If you're using SSL and you're opening up a bunch of parallel connections, to each of those you want to do SSL, right? Now, SSL is fairly costly because you're doing these public key operations, okay? So you don't want to be doing that over and over and over. So they thought about that when they designed SSL. They said, okay, we'll do one session, okay? We'll open up one session. And then once we've opened up this session, we'll spin off a bunch of cheap connections based on that one session that's already been established. And the point really is this. The point is that once you establish a session, you've got a symmetric key, right? Now we can use that symmetric key to establish the connections. Symmetric key operations are cheap. We don't have to do that public key stuff. Over. We only need to do that once. Okay. So uh, the connection establishment protocol, you know, here it is just basically for the record. Uh, the point is no public key operations. It relies on the fact that you've already established a shared symmetric key via the session, 
Okay. And then you can spin off as many connections for that one session as you desire. Uh, okay, so that's it for SSL. On to IPsec. This could take a while. <laughs> okay. Uh, now, SSL and IPsec are really designed to solve the same problem, the same basic problem. Think of a transaction over the internet. You want to do mutual authentication or you want to do some authentication. You want to establish a session key. You want to integrity protect, confidentiality, all that stuff. So they're designed to solve the same problem. The difference is they operate at different layers of the protocol stack. So ideally, we would talk about IPsec, and then we would compare it with SSL. If we do that, by the time we get to the end of stuff talking about IPsec, you will have forgotten about SSL. So let's do it first. <laughs> let's compare um, IPsec and SSL. Okay, so IPsec, this is at the network layer. Okay, what does that mean? Well, for one thing, it's part of the operating system, right? It's not up here at the application layer like SSL. If you want to use SSL in your application, what do you have to do? You have to build it into your application. You have to say, you have to make calls to SSL, right? Because it's part of the application. Okay, if you want to use IPsec, what do you do? That's part of the OS. I don't have anything to do with that, right? I just write my application, I run it. If IPsec is operating on this system, I shouldn't have to do anything. Well, that's kind of nice from an application developer's point of view, right? Okay. So, okay, so it's part of the OS that changes things, at least, you know, from the developer's point of view. But what it does is essentially the same. Encryption, integrity protection, authentication, all that stuff. It is very complex, as we'll uh, see. Now, in comparison, SSL um, is much simpler. Uh, it lives at this so-called socket layer, which is really, you know, up here, application layer. Does the same things, right? Uh, but it's, in comparison, simple, elegant, well-designed, designed to solve a specific problem, solves that problem well. IPsec was designed to be sort of the Swiss army knife, you know, of, of security protocols, could solve any problem. Sounds good in principle, but it creates a lot of uh, complexity. Uh, okay, so IPsec, okay, if you're gonna use IPsec, the OS has to know about this, okay? It has to implement it, has to, uh, has to use it, right? So you don't have to build it into your application, good, but you do have to rely on Bill Gates to build it into the OS, okay? So it has to be there, right? So there's your trade-off. You know, on the other hand, your applications have to be aware of SSL. You have to specifically, you know, say that you're using SSL, but you don't have to trust or rely on the OS to do anything for you. SSL's been around for a long time. Uh, it's been used very widely, you know, literally millions and millions of transactions every day for a long, long time. You know, that sort of track record uh, impresses you, and you should like SSL. The IPsec, a typical application for IPsec would be a so-called virtual private network. So suppose you're work, you work for a company, you're traveling somewhere, right? You want to uh, go back, you know, you're, you're in your hotel room and you want to work on the company, uh, you know, computer, the company network, right? But you want to be very secure about it, right? Because all that important information for your company uh, is at risk. So that's a typical case where IPsec would be used, create a secure tunnel back to your, uh, back to your network. Okay, now, you know, if you have an application and it works, and you suddenly take this information security class and you go and tell your boss, hey, you know, I took this class. Okay, I took this uh, security class, you know, so they talked about SSL, you know, it's really great, we should build it into our application. What is your boss gonna say? You say, are you crazy? This thing works, you know, you're gonna build it in, you're gonna break our application, you know, it's not gonna work, it's good. how much downtime, how much am I gonna have to pay you to do this? Okay, so people are kind of reluctant to do that. You know, what's the benefit? Okay, what's the benefit of having security in your system? It already works, right? So there's kind of a reluctance to go back and re, uh, uh, build it in. Okay, on the other hand, IPsec uh, is not that widely deployed because it's fairly complex, uh, you know, it's actually very complex, and okay, that's a, a, a serious uh, issue here. So the bottom line is that the internet as a whole is less secure than it could be, 